Several local government chairmen in River State have threatened to resume office in the councils if Governor Simlaye Fubara refuses to obey the recent Supreme Court judgment outlawing the use of caretaker committees to run council affairs. The former chairman, loyal to the Minister of Federal Capital Territory, yes, or we can, made the threat during a news briefing in Port Harcourt on Friday. The former chairman of Emoha local government area, Dr. Chidi Lloyd, said they had been patient while expecting Fubara to comply with the court's judgment. However, he has continued to work with the caretaker committee members in the 23 local government councils of the state. Dr. Lloyd alleged that the governor's actions are capable of causing a breach of the peace in the state and called on the police authority at the national level to take necessary actions to stop the activities of Fubara CTC chairman. Dr. Lloyd warned the CTC caretaker committee chairman to stay clear from their project side, saying, anybody who deals with them does so at his or her detriment. Any further impersonation, we will all hit the field. Then in law, we will know what the Supreme Court has said. On his part, the former chairman of Port Harcourt City Local Government and immediate past chairman of Algon in the state, Orwelli Hunda, said the briefing was to draw the attention of President Bola Tinibu, the National Assembly, the Judiciary, Security Agencies, and Rivers people to what he termed crass contempt of judgments of the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court delivered on July 4, 2024 and July 11, 2024, respectively, which affirmed the autonomy of the local government area across the country, abolished powers of the state governors to set up caretaker committees to govern the local government councils in Nigeria as enshrined in Section 7, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution. Ihunda said while other state governors had allegedly started obeying the order of the courts to step down caretaker committees across the nation, the situation in River State is different. Asim, what is your take on this story? You see, the problem we have is that uh, people in power, especially governors in Nigeria, they act like emperors and they act like the monarch or the monarchy of you know the english uh, you know you know uh, uh, people they seem to operate above the law and when there are situations where laws are supposed to be obeyed with impunity they just deride the law and do whatever they like thinking that their political situation shall override the law. Especially in River State, you know, what is happening in River State is like what the Japanese, you know, describe as harakiri, committing, you know, suicide, political suicide, and dismembering the constitution of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. This is a state that there is implicit executive interference in all the other arms of government, be it the legislature, be it the judicature. For instance, in the legislative arm, this is the only state in Nigeria on record that four, five, four members, you know, are deliberating on issues of the state in the House of Assembly, just like that. You know, thereby disenfranchising the other 28 or 27 members of the House of Assembly. Now, when you ask the reason why they are doing this, they will tell you that there are orders of court that were given for that particular purpose of the governor to operate. But decisions that you know, goes against the government or against the governor, they don't obey it. And it's been an aberration because the Supreme Court, in a little tiny convoy of cases, has said that the law, when it's talking about the law, the law of Nigeria, 
or any way at all does not contemplate where the minority will rule over the majority, how be it roughshod, as the case may be. And they, they, they are just you know, doing this with glee. Nobody has any conscience to question the propriety or propriety of four members making laws for a state of about five million people. That is on that aspect. The second one is this. Judicial pronouncements by virtue of the constitution until set aside by higher court has currency and subsist, you know, eternally until reviewed by the particular court or a higher court. In the case, if a lower court gives a particular pronouncement, the, the, the court of appeal can shoot it down or align with them. The Supreme Court is the highest court in Nigeria. The Supreme Court of any nation, whatever pronouncement they give, rightly or wrongly, must be obeyed by every authority. If so facto, in Nigeria here today, if you go to section 287, I have quoted this particular section copiously and studiously for people to understand and go and read. But those who turn blind eyes to issues of this nature, we pretend as if they don't know that that particular section exists in the Constitution. Section 287 sub 1, most especially and specifically, is saying that if the Supreme Court of Nigeria, which is the final court, after the Supreme Court, you either go to Ecowas Court, or that it has reach on here, or you appeal to God and his angels in heaven. That section 287 says that whatever pronouncement, whatever judgment, whatever order or direction or directives issued by the Supreme Court, all authorities in Nigeria shall, it didn't say may, shall execute it. All authorities and persons in Nigeria must execute it. Authority in this case means the governors, the government, the House of Assemblies of the States, the police, ETC, and even the individuals, that is persons, citizens can even clamor and say, we are protesting until the orders or judgment of the Supreme Court is obeyed. But that is not what is happening in Nigeria today. The Supreme Court made a pronouncement that the CTC is anathema. What is CTC? Caretaker Committee. It is anathema to the Constitution and to the rule of law and democracy in Nigeria. And therefore, declared them as contraptions null and void. But as I speak with you, let me be very fair, you know, to the state. Many governors or states, about 21 or 22 of them, are already set up CTCs. And when that particular, you know, judgment came, some of, you know, the states now had to go back and obey the order of court. And immediately set in motion, you know, elections to take place, and ask the highest, you know, member of the council at that time, or from that state, to take over and run the affairs of the local government area until elections are conducted. The CTCs were set aside. But in that state, I don't know what is going on. It's best known to them who are operating the law, who are at the helm of affairs. When I read on newspapers you know, yesterday and even the social media, that <laughs> some of the CTC chairmen were distributing <coughs> cars, kekena peps, buses to their members. Not the people, their members. I was now wondering, somebody asked me, 
Is this what they ought to do? I just I told you, I said, let me tell you. If you give a man three months time to be a citizen chairman in Nigeria, from the first day, most of them will start looting the treasury. Because they say we have limited time. And the only way, they cannot even do anything effectively well. Is it a project they want to start to build a house that they will complete in three months? Is it road that they want to build that they will complete in three months? So it's just a stopgap measure that is used by governors to now put their, you know, their friends and you know, cronies who they will now pacify and placate and you know, hold that particular position for them to prepare themselves for a formal takeover that they feel will be recognized by the Constitution. So for that three months period, the boys have to eat. That is what is just happening. We heard that a billion, two billion were given to each of, of the uh, council in, in the state. That is why they can afford to buy luxury cars for the CTC members and those who are related to them today. It's, on, it's glaring everywhere. So it's a contraption. So the man who is a ragtag army retreating, certainly will do that and do the looting. They loot just like the bandits and buccaneers, you know, do in those days. That once they come into a place, what they are after is to dismember that particular community, dismember the, uh, the treasury, and they call it loot. That is where the word loot, you know, came from. So they are not ashamed to do this. And unfortunately, they are doing this against the judgment of the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land. And nobody feels remorse, whatever this case may be. For me, today, as it stands, the CTC, and many, whether 32 or whatever members they are, the councils, they are illegal. And if Nigeria were to be a state or a nation where rule of law operates, after they exit their offices, the EFCC should investigate and prosecute them. Because they are the ones who are the buccaneers who have come to plunder the till and illegally be supported by the executive. And that is very wrong. Unfortunately also, a lot of political hangers on who will unite them because of political suasion do not even have the vision that this is going to affect the state for a very long time. What I will say to them, I will call on the Secretary Governor of River State to say, please, the support you have been given to this illegal contraption should be withdrawn. And in place, because I remember before you even selected this gang of people or buccaneers, as case may be, you gave a directive that heads of local governments should carry on the affairs of local government pending when you are going to inaugurate the illegal contraptions you did. You can so do by way of reversing it, by way of you know, oral pronouncement and ask them to decline, hand over all materials in their possession to the head of local government in their various local government areas and do the needful. We have set an election for September, October 6th. That's a record development. <coughs> but the head of local government should do it as it's been done in other states like Abia and Imosu, as the case may be. These are things we are appealing to you to do. But finally, on this particular matter, yes, Tilly Lawrence and his other people, they have a right. You know, as citizens of Nigeria, they have a right under Section 40 to assemble and complain. They have the freedom of expression to do that, but I will appeal to them that they keep agitating, but let it not snowball into violent, you know, you know, takeover as they are proposing. That will not all go well, you know, for the peace of the state. Even though what is being said is glaring that these are illegal contraptions, the only way I feel this can be done, and I expect them to have done that even before now, is to approach the courts. You can go back to Supreme Court. You can also institute an action against these people to see if the court will finally say, yes, the Supreme Court order must be obeyed, as the case may be. They can even appeal to the LG Federation right. through a petition to say, 
he should mobilize and make a tense and very stern, you know, statement to river states in particular and other states that have not abide by that particular Supreme Court judgment. Okay. And therefore, cannot do the needful by using the police to maybe do what they're supposed to do. All right. Very quickly, before we move on to the next story, the, the, the ex-local government chairman that are complaining of contempt and saying that they, they would take over the councils. The question I want to ask is, do they have the locus to do that? Even though there was uh, a local government law that was passed that extended their tenure. However, they are no longer in office at this where. The question is, do they have the locus, considering the circumstances currently in River State? Every citizen of Nigeria or even River State has the locus to challenge what is happening in all these local government areas. So say, obey the order of the court. I do not need to be in official dorm or maybe be an old, old boss man set up by the government or gov uh, go governor for me to act. Okay. I can approach because it affects me. I am from a local government. They are operate here. I can approach the court and say, my rights are being breached because these citizens, whatever as they are, they are, they, are, they are an aberration, as the case may be. So, in, in that particular you know, instance, of course, they have the locals. I have the locals to approach, you know, any of the courts. So, that is why I'm asking them to approach the courts, you know, to do that. Okay. As quickly as possible, instead of result to violence. All right.